Good morning. Greetings in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Thank you for linking up to the sermon this morning on this last Sunday of Passion Month. I have chosen as a theme for today, Remember He is Risen. The passage from which I'd like to read is found in the book of Luke, chapter 24, verse 1 to 8. Let's bow together as we pray. Father, we thank you for the privilege of listening to the reading and preaching of your word. We take into subjection every thought, every pretension, and every imagination. May the Holy Spirit open the eyes of your understanding so we may hear what you have to say. In Jesus' name, Amen. Let's read together from Luke 24, verse 1 to 8. On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the women took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. In their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He is risen. Remember how he told you while you were still with you in Galilee. The Son of Man must be delivered over into the hands of sinners, be crucified, and on the third day be raised again. Then they remembered his words. May Lord, the Lord add a blessing to the public reading of his word this morning. We're about to end the 35 days of total lockdown. What we, will we, we remember most when we tell the stories of our experience during lockdown? I'm sure our stories will range from deep pain to hilarious laughter as we endured through what was a very strange period since none of us have been this way before. But I want us to focus this morning on the text verse found in verse 6. And I want like us to allow this verse to give us a fresh hope that the precious memories that sustained us helped us to remain faithful even throughout lockdown and on into the future after lockdown. You see, if only the disciples had remembered what they were taught before they moved into the last week of Jesus' passion, their reactions would have been so different and they would have not deserted the Lord and hide themselves in that upper room. But the amazing emotions and psychological and physical pressure that they were, that they went through was so intense that they actually forgot what our Lord taught them. You see, it was unnecessary for the women, I believe, to actually go to the tomb. But that was customary, customary that they go and they embalm the body of the dead. But if they remembered that Jesus told them that he had to die, that he had to be put in that tomb, but that he will rise again, they did not need to go to the tomb. So you can't blame them. The pain, the, the trauma, the confusion, the loss. So dull their thinking that they forgot what Jesus told them. The question that we have to ask ourselves this morning is, haven't we oft time been in situations like this? Where everything goes wrong and it seems as if we are totally out of control. And so instead of taking hold of our emotions, and our feelings. We let go by saying the wrong words and our actions are unacceptable 
and we just allow ourselves to lose it because we forgot how to handle pressure. And only after everything is calm and we are settled, the words come back to us. If only you remembered, you would not have. And this morning, I want us to look at one of the disciples now near to the end of his life. He finds himself challenged by a different kind of pressure this time. John is on the Isle of Patmos. John had to go through some serious challenges because the early church in its burgeoning growth became a serious threat to the Roman Empire. Domitian, the emperor of the time, realized that he had to put an end to all of this. So he takes John into the Colosseum and he dips him into hot oil. The throng of people that witnessed this particular experience that John went through were amazed that this man endured the pain and came out literally unscathed. And thousands of them turned to Jesus because they realized that the God that John served was able to bring him through this trauma that he had to go through. But now we find John banished because Domitian felt that there was no other way to deal with this ever-rising new faith. He banishes him to the Isle of Patmos. And John now sits there all by himself in another kind of lockdown. And John is chipping away at limestone. And in those moments, the risen Christ comes to John to remind him of three things. And so the first point I want to make this morning is John remembered that the risen Christ stands behind him. Revelation 1.10 says, On the Lord's day I was in the Spirit and I heard behind me a loud voice like a trumpet. It's almost as if the, ver the words of Isaiah chapter 30 verse 21 comes through. When you turn to the right or to the left, you will hear a voice behind you saying, this is the way you walk in it. You see, John was so engrossed uh, in, in his problems of being a prisoner and focused so much on what was in front of him, the, the, the limestone that he was chipping away at. When he hears this voice behind him and John turns around and there stood the risen Christ. I believe at that moment everything came flooding back into John's mind as he remembered Jesus at his baptism as the Lamb of God. He remembers Jesus as the healer of the sick. He remembers Jesus as the calm of the storms. He remembers Jesus as the suffering servant on the cross. Jesus, the resurrection. All of these memories left him in awe when John turned around and saw the glorious risen Christ. Listen to how he, he, he describes what he saw in Revelation 1.12. I turned around to see the voice that was speaking to me. And when I turned, I saw seven golden lampstands. And among the lampstands was one, like the Son of Man, dressed in a robe, reaching to the ground, to his feet with the golden sash around his chest. The hair on his head was white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were like blazing fire. His feet were like bronze glowing in a furnace, and his voice was like the sound of rushing waters. In his right hand, and he held seven stars, and coming out of his mouth was a sharp double-edged sword. His face was like the sun shining in his brilliance. This morning in lockdown, my beloved friend, I'm sure we 
still all feel trapped. Does the way ahead for you seem unclear, just like it was for John on that island? Then I implore you to remember that Jesus is still the way maker, the promise keeper, the light in the darkness. And I believe that you can move forward this morning and beyond the lockdown and all that you still have to face into the future. If your spiritual eyes and ears has been dulled by what you're going through, then remember what Don Moen so powerfully says in that beautiful little song. God will make a way where there seems to be no way. He will work in ways we cannot see, but He will make away for me. The risen Christ is here this morning and he stands behind you to assure you that if you are willing to turn to him, he will reveal himself in all his glory. But secondly, I believe John remembered that the risen Christ was beside him. Revelation 1.17 says, When I saw him, I fell at, my, at his feet as though dead. Then he placed his right hand on me and said, Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. How could John forget the resurrection morning when Mary came rushing into the room with the news, I have seen the Lord. He is risen. I was crying as I bent over into the tomb and there were two men dressed in white asking me, why are you crying? Through my tears I muttered, they have taken my Lord away and I don't know where they have put him. I was so embarrassed that I turned around and did not know it was Jesus standing behind me. But then I heard a voice that sounded familiar, saying, woman, why are you crying? Who are you looking for? But when he mentioned his name, my name, he came and stood beside me. Mary. I knew it was Jesus. John remembered with the overwhelming joy in Mary's voice. And she said, Jesus, Jesus stood beside me and he called me by my name. I want to remind you this morning, my friend, that tears is a language which only God understands. He knows what you're going through. And you have been shedding tears that have caused you so much pain that even when you think about it, your eyes well up with tears. But the risen Christ is here this morning to stand beside you and He knows your name. And all He wants to do is place His right hand on you as He did with John. When John felt in the midst of all the awe that he was as if dead. Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. You know, there's 365 times in the scriptures where this phrase, do not be afraid or fear not appears. Which means that for every day of the year, there's a promise that you and I do not need to fear. The risen Christ stands beside us. Because Jesus knows all about their struggles because he's the first, he's the last, he's the beginning, he's the end, he's the alpha, he's the omega. He knows what you're going through. But he comes this morning to stand beside you so that you may take courage that you're not alone in your struggle. But then thirdly, John remembered the risen Christ goes before him. Revelation 1.18, I am the living one. I was dead and now look, I'm alive forever. And I hold the keys of death and Hades. The mention of keys jolted John's memory. As he thought back to the confession of Peter in response to Jesus' question, whom do men say that I am? Peter declared, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Jesus then says to him, I will give you the keys of the kingdom. 
the declaration at Caesarea and the affirmation on the Isle of Patmos help John to remember that the risen Christ goes before you because he holds the keys to all that shuts you in. In lockdown or whatever else you may find yourself cut off from. And John needed to hear the jangle of those keys to assure him that in the midst of what he was going through, Jesus was ready to unlock for him a whole new world. You see, John was the one that was chosen in the final analysis to take the book of Revelation and write to the seven churches the mysteries of what God was still wanting to do in that world. John was chosen. And I believe that you and I are chosen to have the experience of hearing the jangle of the keys because the revenant Christ is going before us even after all that we're going through is over and done. I believe that He wants to open up doors for you and me that you and I felt will never ever be opened. Can I hear someone say to me this morning, but Pastor Clive, you don't know. I don't even think there is a key for my situation. I am so hopelessly in despair. But I believe that the risen Christ has a master key that can open any locked situation and bring you out victorious on the other side. That is why John could write to the church at Philadelphia in Revelation 3 verse 7, These are the words of him who is holy and true, who holds the keys of David. When he opens, no one can shut. And what he shuts, no one can open. Do I hear you say what I've been through with my little faith? I don't know if what I take what it takes to open the door for me to go through. Don't forget our main three points. The risen Christ is behind you, the risen Christ is beside you, the risen Christ is goes before you. Let him unlock the closed doors that will open all that you must still go through and accomplish for him. If only the women had remembered, they would not have needed to go to the tomb. If the disciples had just remembered what Jesus taught them at the Lost Supper, they would not have deserted him. They would not have had to lock themselves up behind closed doors. If you and I are willing to remember all that the Lord has done for us, even though we were in lockdown and in the midst of COVID-19, with the coronavirus threatening every one of us, we can overcome as we look behind us, as we look beside us, as we look before us, the risen Christ is with us. So let me close with where I started. Will you remember stories of the empty malls, the empty stadiums, the empty car lots, the empty schools, the empty churches? But may you never forget that what sustained us throughout these last 35 days has been the empty tomb. Then you will be able to say with confidence, because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, my fears are gone. Because I know that he holds the future and life is worth the living just because he lives. Father, I pray this morning that you would give to each one of us 
wonderful sense of your nearness. That when your voice speaks from behind us, we will turn to see you willing to come right next to us and hold us in your loving arms as you commission us to go forth because you have gone before to prepare a place for us. May this be our joy as we step into the new month of May. And we pray this with much thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you and God bless you.